Six days. You're right. We've been there for some time. You've been there for a week or so. More than a week, yeah. Um, I know that some of you are going, ooh, my cooperating teacher, mm, kind of hit me, not so good. Or my cooperating teacher is really great. Suck it up. Yeah. Did I say that? Oh, were you filming? Darn it. <laughs> really, you need to give that cooperating teacher a chance. Okay? I know some are hard, some don't have a lot of management, some are new, some are old, some are in between. You need to give them a Some are awesome and veterans and have no idea how to teach with math. They're learning. So you got to be patient. We're all new teachers. Yeah, be patient. Um, learn what to do and what not to do, right? Mm -hmm. But be patient with them. When I started in the block, I thought, I, I got this and I had the worst cooperating teacher. She was on range. I learned a lot from her. Until you walked a mile in their shoes, you don't know. You don't know what's going on at home. They don't live at the school, by the way. <laughs> the kids think they do. Know that they have lives, they have families, they have worries, they have COVID issues going on too. Be patient, help out. Be part of the solution, not part of the problem. I know that it's really easy to judge and really easy to say, well, you just don't know, she's just really hungry, or she just talks all the time, or she just did it. She has a really bad breath. Relax. No, no. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so go with the flow. Really try to be helpful, not part of the problem. And I just would add, you. it seems like you know it's going to be perfect, but when you're in their shoes, you're going to have a whole new perspective and go, oh my heck, that's why it wasn't perfect. So when you have to be there be six hours every day, then you'll understand a little more. Um, when we go to Washington County, you're going to be tired. You're going to be really, really tired. Once you hit the door, you're the teacher, right? You put the tired away, you put the feelings away, and you become the teacher and be the teacher. So don't take it out on the kids. My husband's also a teacher. I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> He's taught for 43, 44 years, yeah. which is automotive education. Um, it's really great, but he has a guy that teaches with him that was so angry with the students the other day, the students just got to walk out. Well, we don't have to do this, right? They have to be there. You have to be there. Make the best of it. Be happy, okay? And if you're not happy, fake it. Yeah, and be fake happy it until anyway. you make it. Remember I told you you can't cry in front of them? You go into the desk, you go into the bathroom. <laughs> You blame it on allergies. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to be frustrated. Sometimes they don't listen. Oh my gosh. Sometimes they don't, right? Uh, yeah. A lot of times they don't. Be patient. Try your management. Tell. Don't ask. I can't tell you that enough. Yeah. Tell. Don't ask. Do you want to line up? No. Do you want to do math? No. Even if they do. Do you want to stop talking? No. No. Um, be positive when you can. Turn it to the positive. Never, never use the S word. Shut up. That's... Oh, they suck. You got dirty mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you were saying that you suck. I was like, that's even worse. I don't know if that either. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson's using the S word, Jackson's using the S word. And I thought, oh my gosh. Not gonna shut up. But now that you tell that story, tell them the F word story. <gasps> That's the best. We couldn't say part at my house. He's <laughs> <laughs> using the F word, he's using the F word. Oh no. I said, did you use the F word? Well, we didn't say part at my house. <laughs> Be mindful. Yeah. Jamie and I both talked about that. Some of you, I know how tempting it is. You think that you're taking notes. <laughs> really? You don't <laughs> think we know that you're shopping? <laughs> we know. Or you're <laughs> texting your husband. Or we get it. We, we get know. it. If you're not mindful, we can't make you be mindful. Be mindful. Be in the moment. Learn something. You think that I don't know every little trick that you've ever done. I do. I've seen it all. Probably more than once. 
Um, and just so you know, that camera in the room, oh, we can zoom right in on one. I've done it a couple of times just to see, and you can see everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, really, we know that you got new shoes coming on Monday. <laughs> we know that, right? Yeah. So be mindful. Be in the moment. Jump in and join. Jamie teaches early sophomores mostly, mostly. early childhood class. She can't get them to join. And I, I just can't wait to get with you guys. I was like, like give me the block, because uh, they are just... Do we have to walk outside and pick our own leaf? Yes, yes, you do. You get to. Can my friend yeah. pick one for me? Get up, let's go. You know, it's, it's crazy. So we're grateful that you guys are. You will only be as good as you are in the moment. Absolutely. So be in the moment. Be in the moment with your kids. Um, we talked at length in a little meeting that I was just in, and they said, I said, what's the number one thing? It was a student teacher meeting. I said, what's the number one thing I can tell the block students? And they said, know your students. And the only way you can know your students is not be so busy preparing curriculum that you don't interact with them. Know your students. Go out to recess. Play with them. Best way to get to know them is to play with them. Be cautious of the one that has the worst life ever and I have to go home and I just want to be with you. Be cautious of that one. There's attention getters. But know your students. Know their buttons. Um, be in the moment up here. We're up here to have fun and relax a little bit and enjoy life. And see what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> and to see if you really I are smiling or if you're sticking your tongue out and making your eyes smile. <laughs> you can do that. Oh. <laughs> um, remember we did I can statements. I want you to think of an I can statement because tomorrow morning we're going to walk, we're going to drive up to the Zion Overlook. Yes. And we're going to walk out to the Bristlecone Pine. Learning lives forever. And we're going to ask you, what's an I can moment you have while you're up here during this retreat? And it might be, I can do hard things. Yeah. I can eat raw pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely we went to not, but, yeah. Arizona, and we got up there and there was no gas, no propane. And you have dough and you have sauce and <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it wasn't good. Anyway, <laughs> but we did laugh at it. Okay, I think that's it. I guess we'll say we can do, should we do problem solving? Yes. Or do you want to do song? Oh, let's do the song. Okay. <laughs> We're going to sing our song. I'll be saying one. And you love the song. Just song. Joey, you love the song. I love that song. I love that song. I love that song. I was like, look. I'm not going to do it. I'm not Never have we had a theme song before. You're the first. <laughs>
And she said, oh my gosh, that's perfect. Blow it up. We've got to keep it. So I did. I blow it up so it's much, much bigger. But I want you to think about a diffuser. Do you guys know? Do you know what a diffuser is? You put the little, well, I really do. But the little oils in, and yes, it comes out. And my friend gave me one, and I, I thought it was great. I really can't find it. It's packed somewhere. But there was a little manual. And on the back, it was saying, if something's wrong, this is how you troubleshoot. And I want you to imagine that you're the customer service rep for this company as you read through some of these things. And imagine how funny this must have been to actually put together because we were cracking up and we don't work at the company. <laughs> um, go ahead no, and look at it. We should. <laughs> so it tells you the symptom. Most of it is people would call saying, the unit is not working, no mist, or the mist has diminished. So instead of calling and just saying that, there are some pretty obvious solutions, but the way they put this together was, oh my gosh, just hilarious. So we're gonna look at this really quick, once everybody gets one. So on, this, on the left it says, um, possible solution. So imagine calling, um, the power supply may not be connected. Oh, it's not. Plug in the power and push the button, okay? Solution, hey, it's, it's not working. There's insufficient water. Oh, go ahead and refill the tank. I mean, imagine. Um, water exceeds the max water level line. Good idea to do is just dump a little bit out. <laughs> um, ceramic disc might be dirty. You know what? Go ahead and just clean that off. Just clean that off. <laughs> um, the top cover is unsecure. Just go ahead and secure it. <laughs> um, the air inlet is blocked when it's dirty. Just make sure that air inlet is clean and ventilated. That will solve your problem. Um, the air outlet is blocked or dirty. Go ahead and clean it, you know? The air outlet. So pretty there's one other problem. Hey, the main unit is leaking water. Is the top secure? Oh no, just go ahead and secure that. And it won't leak that water. <laughs> okay. So we were laughing really, really hard as we looked at this. We thought this is so relevant to what you're starting to do. You've got to be problem solvers. You've got to be problem solvers. Sometimes Peggy and I get phone calls that feel an awful lot like this. Um, Lady, there's too much water in the diffuser. <laughs> Take some out. <laughs> Sorry, no, no. Just don't look it out. Um, so we're asking you, if you're about to enter a profession where nobody holds your hand, you have a lot of support with collaboration, but nobody's going to hold your hand, okay? So we want you to think about troubleshooting some of your problems. You're going to be in the classroom, and everything's not going to go perfect, I promise you. When you're, when you're taking over um, these those couple of days at George Washington. Think, look at, look at down here, we gave you some four step solution, okay? Number one, try to figure it out yourself. yourself. Use common sense. That kid has to go to the bathroom. Dude, should I call Peggy and Jamie and ask them? Hey, <laughs> can this kid go to the bathroom? Can this kid go to the bathroom? Like, use common sense, okay? Like, try to figure out yourself. Read through the syllabus or information you've been given. That's something we get all the time. Hey, can you tell me what about the, just, you just read the assignment, it tells you right there, okay? okay don't take your calls about that. Ask a classmate. You guys, this is a wealth of knowledge all around you. You guys are awesome. You're really good at helping each other. Talk to a peer, ask a classmate. And then, if all else fails and you still can't figure it out, then, then call Peggy and I. Um, but we're gonna ask you to start being problem solvers, and you're gonna see that you're gonna have to be in the middle of when you take over um, with the teachers. Just think about it. Pause for a second and think, common sense, what would, you do? what would you do? Would you call someone and say, you know what? Oh, the water's above the exceeds water line. What should I do? Just, just don't move it out. You'll be good. You know, you'll be good. So we want you to try and work as problem solvers. But this is hilarious. And you might get a good kick out of this. Did anyone not get one? I think I stole some rings. Um, and so when, if you ever need to explain to someone, even kids, we try to help them be problem solvers. They didn't even understand that. What would I do? Oops, dump some out. Oh, plug it in. That would work. So help them as well. And we're here to teach kids to be problem solvers. Absolutely. Instead of, teach teach I'm tired. <laughs> okay, what can we do? Right? Yeah. My be problem, problem solvers. Bro. If you always, always, always err on the side of kids, you'll be fine. Yeah. What's best for this kid? Is it best for him to go to the bathroom right now? No, because he just went. <laughs> Unless there's an issue. Be aware of that, but help them be problem solvers. Turn it back on them and say, what should you be doing? What could you be doing? How could you solve that? And they'll go, I don't know. Well, let's think about it. What's the big problem? Okay, what can you do about it? How can we help? 
get them to problem solve too. And one thing that worked really well with, I mean, fourth and fifth graders, I'm assuming it would work well with all kids, but they like to say, what would, what would, could you do to solve that? I don't know. And I say, okay, if you did know, what would you, what do you think you'd say? <laughs> well, probably say, and they come up with a great solution. <laughs> okay, so you use, use that too. Like, don't say, I don't know, I just don't know. Well, if you did know, what, what do you think you'd say? <laughs> and that probably say, I shouldn't have taken that from it. Oh, that's a, that's a good solution. <laughs> you know, that is the easiest answer. I don't know.
And then afterwards, we're going to go try to find each of the different groups and see how many we can find. Right. So if you're hiding inside and you want to find like a book or like something on the wall that you think it would like be a good color, your pastel to like match that, you could like roam around. Or like if you're outside and you know you want to hide in the tree, trees are green, it'll blend in. So try to make it blend in because we're going to have a competition to see who can find the most. Okay. We're going to split like right about here. I'll have you on this side. This group will have you guys be the outside group because you guys are going to hide and color outside. You guys are going to be the inside group. You guys are going to hide and color inside. Did everyone get a Pascal? Is there someone from each group that would be willing to kind of hold on to color like crayons and stuff like that? Donna, I'll give you this. And someone have this one. Awesome. And there's tape in there as well. <laughs> so we're going to give you guys about seven-ish minutes to color and hide, and then we're going to switch. As soon as you're done coloring, you can
now warmed up our observation skills. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about systems and the different types of systems that we can see up here in Cedar Canyon. So specifically we're going to talk about ecosystems. Who knows what an ecosystem is? You want to draw a big pine tree? You <laughs> go for it, girl. <laughs> Feel free to take one. Take like a couple. I don't really care. We're going to give you about like five or seven minutes to go find something and draw it. And then when you guys, we'll just call you back and then we're going to talk more about plant life, okay? I guess we can just do this like a heavily tossed stamp. Please, let's do that. This isn't going to be very super original to do the cabin with like plant life because I would have never once. thought of that. <laughs> never would have thought of that. Literally I'll so mind blown. <laughs> but I think that's super smart. I love that you guys all like found something and you made it your own, which is like the most important part of this project. <laughs> Whatever she said. <laughs> okay, so basically this is a little paragraph that we were supposed to say for our group. Is ask the team to observe the various kinds of plants at each site. Suggest the students record the most common kinds of plants found in each location that they know, especially where each grows relative to others. So, what did you notice that grows a lot over here? Yes. yes. <laughs> and you'll see throughout Cedar Mountain a lot of pine cones, or pine cones. <laughs> pine trees. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have a five-year-old who likes to collect them, so pine cones it is. But you'll see those like throughout the entire mountain. Um, I don't know, is any of you guys from Cedar? No? Okay, so years ago we had this thing called a bark beetle and it actually is really bad for the trees where it came in and killed a whole bunch of trees. And so that's why when you're driving up a canyon, you can see a whole bunch of trees knocked down because we had to bring in loggers to help knock down those trees because these beetles were just attacking every plant, every, not plant, like every tree up here and making them super sick and killing them. And so a lot of our trees are still struggling. Oh, so uh, very bright. <laughs> wow. Wow. Right? So let's get started with a soil group. 
where you went and found the cabin, fish area. That way. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I don't know. We're going to put ours. Okay. Um, oh, here you go. So we, first of all, we started digging in the dirt and we noticed that it's up the hill further was more moist and down at the bottom of the hill was drier. So, and harder. <laughs> so we basically talked about how soil is like basically the backbone of an ecosystem besides water. Because <laughs> if you don't have soil to grow plants in and then the smaller animals eat the plants and then the bigger animals eat the smaller animals, so it's like the whole cycle. Um, we also talked about how soil helps like big trees, like the roots embed in the soil so the trees aren't just sliding down the mountain and stuff. And how soil is very nutrient rich and why it's important to grow plants. direction the wind was blowing um, and we also talked about the weather so usually the last couple of weeks it's been really sunny but today it's very cloudy because of the rain last night um, so yeah that was pretty much the way okay, of the land group that was my group um, we didn't actually decide on who's gonna be our perfect it's you Awesome. Okay, <laughs> so we went just up the hill, so like, is this supposed to be the front or the back of the cabin? It's yeah. just the cabin. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Inclines affect plant life and the ecosystem around them. We noticed a lot of fallen trees and a lot of little holes in the ground. We also noticed that with the flat area, there's more cars. And someone just said that it was repaired, so there's no holes in it anymore. <laughs> Hold on, sure it's <laughs> yeah, it's going to just last by the end. It's going to be great. But yeah, that was basically ours. talk a little bit more about later but ways that you can identify the differences between pine trees so if like you can shake the pine tree's hand and it can tell you what kind of pine tree it is Ooh. very cool um, but yeah there's a lot of like little grassy roots and stuff that come up that I also don't know the name of but there's also lots of really pretty flowers too lots of dandelions about how like maybe different animals might be closer to us or might be away from us like depending um, on how loud we are or how much noise we make and then we saw a cute squirrel and he doesn't look very happy and a <laughs> nest and a bunch of holes and a fly and so but did we think that the holes could be on our oh we talked about that <laughs> <laughs> Deer tracks and hoop 
to see like where they kind of hang out so they know if it's in their hunting unit that's where they can go get food for our family for winter so don't judge me for not being right <laughs> <laughs> own that there. awesome okay so after talking about these five different groups we realized that all of these together can make up the ecosystem for up in cedar canyon the cabin and so that's basically what we wanted to let you guys or help you guys learn today is there's ecosystems all around us and this is the unique one that we have up here so can i actually ask a question with that how do each of these different systems work together we've talked about all of them but they're not just all separate systems how do they all work together to be this e ecosystem that we know here in Cedar Canyon. Yes, Holly. The sunlight helps the plants grow, which mm -hmm. helps the animals live, which so forth. They yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. For ecosystem work, you gotta have all parts working together. Mm -hmm. So if we took yeah, away the sun, what would happen? Oh, no, no, But no, I'm going to have lunch with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? What's a gruffalo? A gruffalo? Why didn't you know? He has terrible tusks and terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws. Where are you meeting him? Here by these rocks? And his favorite food is roasted fox. Roasted fox? Oh my, fox said. Goodbye, little mouse, and off and away he sped. Silly old fox, doesn't he know? There's no such thing as a gruffalo. Kind of like snipes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on went the mouse through the deep dark wood, and Owl saw the mouse, and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Join me for tea in my treetop house. It's frightfully nice of you, Owl, but no, I'm going to have tea with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? What's a gruffalo? A gruffalo, why didn't you know? He has knobby knees and turned out toes and, his po and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. Where are you meeting him? Here by this stream? And his favorite food is owl ice cream. Owl ice cream? To wit, to who? Goodbye, little mouse, and away owl flew. Silly old owl, doesn't he know? There's no such thing as a gruffalo. On went the mouse through the deep dark wood. A snake saw the mouse, and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come for a feast in my log pile house. It's wonderfully good of you, snake, but no, I'm having a feast with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? What's a gruffalo? A gruffalo, why didn't you know? His eyes are orange, his tongue is black. He has purple prickles all over his back. Where are you meeting him? Here by this lake, and his favorite food is scrambled snake. Scrambled snake, it's time I hit. Goodbye, little mouse, and away snake slid. Silly old snake, doesn't he know? There's no such thing as a gruffalo. Oh, but who is this creature with terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws? He has knobby knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. 
His eyes are orange, his tongue is black, he has purple prickles all over his back. Oh, help! Oh, no! It's a grappolo! My favorite food, the grappolo said, you'll all taste good, or you'll taste good on a slice of bread. Good, said the mouse. Don't call me good. I'm the scariest creature in this deep, dark wood. Just walk behind me and soon you'll see everyone is afraid of me. Oh, sure, said the grappolo, bursting with laughter. You lead the way and I'll follow after. They walked and walked till the gruffalo said, I hear a hiss in the grass ahead. Oh. It's Snake, said the mouse. Why, Snake, hello? Snake took one look at the gruffalo. Oh, dear, he said. Goodbye, little mouse, and slid right away into his log pile house. You see, said mouse, I told you so. Amazing, said the gruffalo. They walked some more till the gruffalo said, I hear a hoot in the trees ahead. It's Owl, said the mouse. Why, Owl, hello. Owl took one look at the gruffalo. Boo hoo, he said. Goodbye, little mouse, and flew right up to his treetop house. You see, said mouse, I told you so. Astounding, said the gruffalo. They walked some more till the gruffalo said, I hear some paws on the path ahead. It's Fox, said the mouse. Why, Fox, hello. Fox took one look at the gruffalo. Oh, help, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And he ran right into his underground house. The mouse said, Gruffalo, now you see everyone is afraid of me. But now my tummy is starting to rumble, and my favorite food is Gruffalo Crumble. Gruffalo Crumble, the Gruffalo said. And quick as the wind, he turned and fled. And that's, oh, just kidding, I thought that was the end. <laughs> <laughs> One more page. All was quiet in the deep dark wood. The mouse found a nut, and the nut was good. Now it's over. <laughs> made up or it's imaginary. Yeah. So can you think of a movie character that you like a favorite movie if there's a character in it that's made up or imaginary? And can you raise your hand and give me an example? The genie from Aladdin. Yeah, the genie from Aladdin. Oh, that's not real. <laughs> <laughs> it just ruined something. Chocolate the Tin Man. The Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. Yes. One more? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Are you sure? <laughs> so now that we have an understanding of what fictitious means, we're going to play a little bit of a game. We're going to read to you a description of an animal, and you're going to decide in your head whether or not that is real or fictitious. Mm -hmm. So be listening and making up your mind while we're reading it to you, and then we're going to give you five seconds, and if you think that it's real, you're going to go to this side with the fire extinguisher, and if you think it's fake, you're going to walk over to the side with the piano, or fictitious, you're going to walk over to the side with the piano. Does that sound good? Everybody got it? Wonderful. So we're going to start off with the ogre-faced spider. So as I'm reading this description, think in your head if you think it's real. When it's time to catch a meal, this spider has a special trick. First it spins a web of silk, then it grabs the corners of the web, web with its four front legs. Then it hangs upside down and waits for insects to crawl by along the ground. When they do, the spider drops the web over them like a net and pulls up its meal. So everybody, five seconds, if you think it's real, over to the fire extinguisher, if you think it's fictitious, over to the piano. <laughs> This plant is an enormous reddish rotten smelling flower. It is a parasite that lives on the roots of a tropical forest vine. The flowers may be more than three feet across and weigh more than 35 pounds. They bloom for only three days and depend on flies to pollinate them. If you think it's real, 
Stay over here if you think it's fake. Come over here. Right. I think it's fake. Then he decorates the stick house with shells, feathers, flowers, clothespins, jewelry, and other objects that are fancy. He fa his favorite color is bright blue. He may also paint the inside of the stick house using berry juice and charcoal sticks. Female birds are attracted to the male's handiwork. Okay, ready? Go! Okay. 
I have no idea. No idea. <laughs> Does anybody know of like a water animal that they could think of? Yeah. That alligator. Nico? Pufferfish. What a pufferfish. Yeah. So when they feel threatened, they puff out, and anything that gets hit by their spikes is injected with poison. They're also legal in America. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, something I thought was fake. Because of Finding Nemo, that fish that has the light that comes <laughs> off of it, that's a real thing. <laughs> I didn't know that. She's not a real life. <laughs> it's not real life, but it, <laughs> I thought that was like a totally made up thing. Yeah, so, I, I, I love that there is a dangerous fish. Like the dumb fish that the nose that like. Yeah. Oh, a fish? Yeah. <laughs> what are those? I don't know, and that's a really good segue into the next part. Is why do you guys think, going off of what Tina was saying, why do you guys think anglerfish look the way that they look? To scare other fish. To scare other fish. They live in the dark. Because they live in the dark. And what? why would they need to look like that? Because they live, live in the dark. Like, with the light or them in the dark? <laughs> Either way, why do you think, like, what adaptations do you think they they had because they live in the dark? Well, in Finding Nemo, the other fish are attracted to the light. Okay, and what do they do with those other fish? They're like sea through like and they have scary. nasty teeth. <laughs> um, can you guys think of other animals that have adaptations that help them because of how they live but are like kind of strange? But you might not. That are like that's a I oh. totally Okay. <laughs> Let's pay attention in class. Thanks. Carrie. I was thinking maybe like an armadillo. Okay, and what's up with the Yeah. Protect yeah, definitely. Cause, cause they live in the desert, right? Yeah. And there's lots of animals in the desert, desert that want to eat armadillos. But that shell, and when they roll up into a ball, that's some, that's a way that protects them. So that's a great adaptation that the armadillo has. Can anybody think of anything else, Dana? I don't know. This is what you're looking for. But there's a thing called the polka. It's a big rodent. It's not very cool, so it goes up to them. So I feel like people probably feed them. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of that. Yeah, I mean, that's an adaptation. <laughs> that's furry. Oh. Is it cute? <laughs> it's <laughs> like, is it like friendly? It's like, it's, 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 like, it's, it's like the cutest rodent I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it smiles at you. <laughs> wow. That's a yeah, but no, that's a great adaptation because that animal has learned that people will feed it, so then it doesn't have to go out and hunt and put itself at risk. Nico? It's my guy. What's up with kiwi birds? They don't have like wings. They just kind of like sit and they run around, mm -hmm. but they have long beaks because I believe they eat flowers. Okay, so they can like get the nectar yeah. and stuff. Okay, you have one. I was thinking of like a stink bug. Like, okay, yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah, like they like go up on their hind legs and stuff so that way they look bigger. Uh -huh. And then they put out a bad thing so that they stink. go away. <laughs> yeah, that's a great one. Jessica? Along with that is skunks. Like skunks mm -hmm. have the same smell. Pufferfish have the, like mm -hmm. whenever they're threatened, you have the, that's all the I'm just gonna go with this, but like even us as humans, mm -hmm. like there's ones that will go hide in the woods to be away from people, but we all put up our own defenses to yeah. stay with them. Yeah, it's like you can see adaptations in just human history from, you know, huts to now we have houses to keep us safe. Um, going into that, go to Lacey and Shannon. They have an activity to kind of go along with adaptations and, and things like that. Okay, did everybody get a piece of paper? Yes? Raise your hand if you didn't get a paper. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so you're going to adapt right now. You may not use any words, only sounds. Please find your group. Go. Oh, 
sorry guys. We just <laughs> we what? I haven't seen it yet. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be We're the only one leaving the blue gun. Sorry guys. <laughs> Very nice. That was from Fishtail. Have any of you guys seen that movie? Oh yes. That's what we thought of. Donna thought of that. So the car wash. Yeah, yeah the car wash. The whale wash. Okay. The whale wash, yeah. And then do you guys want to show what it actually looks like? And this is what it actually looks like. So We think we did really good. I want to see you. Up word. It's not it's a real thing. But also, this is our little dude. He has a he has an eyeball right there. You just can't see very good. Um, but it la it lives in lakes in Mexico's in Mexico's particular <laughs> Mexico, and it usually produces well in its larval state. Uh, we kind of thought that it would look like this, but with feet. But we didn't have enough time to put feet on there. And it looks pretty darn close to like a salamander, but like pink. So we're spot on with the colorful, but just the wrong color. And just so another addition is axolotls can be lots of different colors, not just pink. So Whoa! it's correct. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's a oh. And it's a mammal. Um, lives in forests in Latin America and it feeds mostly on frogs and it finds, uh, on frogs it finds by detecting and recognizing the mating calls of male frogs. So we really emphasized his lips here. <laughs> and uh, the ears so you can hear the frogs. And uh, this is what it's supposed to look like. So I think I'm pretty smart on that. <laughs> Rainforest of Latin America and so can cool. run across water on its hind legs. Ooh. This is what ours looks like. <laughs> this is what he actually looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's pretty spot on. Just a different color, but other than that, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, get together. <laughs> this is our, our final. Tour. We like second. This is the Hoatzin oh. bird oh, in, from South America. Says it's a bizarre looking bird whose young can climb through trees using hook like claws on their wings. So we've got the, the needles coming out as the claws, and then it's bizarre looking with the long legs. And, yeah. It's supposed to look like this. <laughs> yeah. I see that. Really close. It kind it's of looks very, like a yeah. pheasant, if you guys know what that okay. looks like. Oh. Perfect. Oh. Yeah. Rolls of woodpeckers and temperate forests. <laughs> I just thought it was a bird, but it's actually <laughs> <laughs> And as you read the script, I just went, it said mammal. Birds are not mammals. <laughs> with all the uh, googly eyes, it has five eyes. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Good job. Those are awesome. Before you guys go off, can you guys please clean up your area, put the pencils back in the boxes, and bring them up here and pick up your trash before the next group. Let's Today, we are talking, I'm sorry, by now I'm just going to pretend like you guys are school age because it's easier for me. So, uh, oh, that we're school, that we're school age kids, we're all school age kids. Okay, um, huh? Even me. Even ten. So, um, who can raise their hand and tell me what is a characteristic, what do you guys think a characteristic is? That's kind of a tricky word. Yeah. Like a feature. Awesome. A trait. A trait, okay. Like personality. Awesome. Holly, do you have something one? about me? Awesome. So, something about you, right? So, can someone raise their hat and tell me what is a characteristic about me that you notice? Shannon. Um, you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
you're a boy. I am a boy. You have black hair. I do have black hair. What else? You have glasses. I have glasses. I like how Lacey and Julia are making observations about me to what I have on, or stuff that make me. I like how Peggy's using her binoculars to <laughs> <laughs> What else? Dwayne, right, I'm done. Friendly. Friendly, awesome. Okay, I want you to think in your mind. Think of your favorite animal. Think of one characteristic, and when you have it, I want you to whisper it into your hand and then put it into your ear. Awesome, give me a thumbs up if you're ready. Okay, I want you to stand up real quick. Awesome, we're gonna get in groups of three, so find three friends near you. And become a Okay, so what we're going to do is you are going to think of some characteristics. So look at your partner, silently, let's look at your partner and think of some things that make you guys the same and think of some things that make you guys different. So first we're going to start with some things that make you the same. Ready? Set, go. Characteristics that you found with you and your partners. Two different ones. Tina. I have gigantic hands and these guys are tiny. We were all different heights. Oh, that's good. Great Awesome. Okay, Ali is going to explain our perspective yes. and everything. All right, so just like everybody here has different characteristics, we have similarities and differences. Uh, we're going to talk about the ways that trees have similarities and differences, specifically leaves. We're going to do that with an activity that Mia is going to explain. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go outside and pick four different leaves. But before we do that, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. I thought this was really cool. I've never done it before. And a side note, if you ever want to want to laminate leaves, make sure they're dry before they're in turn out. <laughs> okay, you don't want that. No. So this is how they're supposed to look like. It's pretty neat. You're just gonna grab your leaf that you find, put it under the paper, I'll show it to you, and just color over your leaf. And it'll turn out like this. So this 
this is what we're gonna be doing. Cool. All right. Your turn. <laughs> so for this activity, we need to go and find four different kinds of leaves each. So try to get. We're gonna split into groups and try to get different ones than your group members. Yep. Um, so then we will be sorting our leaves, and there's different ways that you can sort them within your group. You guys can decide how you want to sort them. It can be by size, or shape, or color, or where you found them, or however you guys decide in your group that you guys want to sort your leaves once you find them. I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of what I was going to say. That, um, we are not going to give you criteria of how you're going to sort them. That's up to your group. And then after um, everyone has a um, sort of them and everything, we'll come back together and share how each group has sorted them and we'll see if it, they're the same or different or anything like that. So, to and I, have, oh, sorry, I just have a side note with the rubbing of the leaves. If you, you want to press kind of hard so you can get the detail of the leaf on there because you should be able to see the veins and the texture of the leaves and everything like that. So, that can also be some options for sorting is looking at the details. You will do your own paper for, you can do, well, you want one leaf on each paper, right? So we can sort it easier, right? Okay, so one leaf on each paper. So you'll do, and if you don't collect all four, that's fine. You can do like three or four. Four leaves, right? They're yeah. rubbing four leaves. Yeah. 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 Are you rubbing four leaves individually? Or is yes, it individually. Okay. Yep. Rubbing them in and then you're coming sorting. together in the group to okay. sort them. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Four each. Four each. Four each. Yes. Okay. Yes. Are they just tree leaves or can they be like grass leaves or plant leaves? It's whatever leaves you find. So it's kind of up to you. Pine needles. Because then that can be a way that you sort them. One came from a tree, one came from grass. Sort of thing. So it's kind of up to, up to you. So. Okay, so this, yes. So are we grabbing our leaves and then coloring and then sorting, or? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And that'll be more, like, we'll obviously go over this again with our individual groups. Okay. Yeah, we'll be each okay. with the group. So, any other questions before we split you into groups? How long will we have to collect our leaves? Um, we'll spend like 10 minutes in our groups. 10 minutes. 10 minutes total to do our groups. Total, so that means minutes. find your leaves probably in two minutes. Okay. When you're coming in. You can decide. Oh, we'll, we'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we're we're going to split you into groups and then we'll go into the Perfect. exact details of the group. So let's get split up. Okay, so if you have brown eyes, stand up. Wow. wow. That's weird. <laughs> can we don't look like Okay, you guys are going with Omar. Let's do Oh, that one's big. 
Which one did oh. you not do? That was, it, I don't know. Oh, she had kind of what if, that, what if there is one group. that is different? Is it's that okay an to have it ha as its own group? Yeah. 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 It doesn't have to have multiple, right? True. <laughs> Great. Great. Okay. So do you guys remember how you sorted? Yeah. yeah. Round, long, so medium. So you guys want to choose a spokesman? So then just one person shares? I can do it. Okay. <laughs> and then maybe I would I would say that that one is like a different one, and it's okay that it's only there's only one in the, that group. If you want your list, sort of thing. You can grab that out of the pile, by the way. <laughs> oh, we don't have to have the pile. No, it was. Like, should I just take like, one from each pile? Like, yeah, that's yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. So, like a long one, a tiny one. I'll take mine of this one. And we are going to wrap up our activity and our lesson. So, did you guys have fun doing the leaf harvings? Yes! That was fun. It's surprising to me how much uh, texture you can get on those and how much detail. So, yeah. let's see. Who. Let's have somebody share, by the raise of hand, let's have somebody share two different ways that you guys know. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Grass and somebody 
had beetles and different, like they came from all over, right? It has a function on its specific plant and we didn't get into that today. This is more just like beginner, like let's get into the, the structures and systems. But if we were to continue on this path, we would learn more about the importance of leaves and like how they have a role in trees. And so remember the and tree that we made. why they're turning brown so a big one is moisture def 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 deficiencies my heavens sorry everyone <laughs> or high temperature so those in combination can really cause the tree to be brown so you're right so definitely this summer we haven't had a ton of water plus it's been really hot so that could be causing this um or the other option is something in the root or trunk damage trunk yeah trunk damage can be going all the way up into the tree and affecting the leaves this way um, this can be road salt is a very common one in Utah. Road salt is very toxic for like Really yeah for plants too. So this could be like really, I don't maybe in this way I just put it near the road. That could be a big reason why This is affecting when cars drive by really fast. It goes into the air, breaks into particles and affects this tree. So what we're gonna do is I want you to kind of visually picture in your brain. Remember this tree. If you have your phone you can take a picture of it if you want. And then we're gonna go inside and we're gonna grab paper and we're gonna draw this tree. Yeah, this tree. And we're gonna kind of, then our job is to present to the group what we found on our tree and why we think the tree is dying or its leaves are brown. And kind of our theories on why that's true. So, let's get them to the picture. 
The sad tree. It's a sad tree. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Done. Okay, <laughs> so I can do the rest of the green. Oh, do we do Four. I don't remember which one's which, but. And one's like sweeter, one's. For what is this? Bell peppers. Oh, yeah. Presented. Should we bring our on the ground? Broken branches on the ground. I saw a broken one that was like detached and was like just hanging. Okay. Like hanging yeah. in the bush. There are some that are on the ground. Yeah. From that tree over there, okay. it damaged. It is damaged, and leaves are turning fall colors prematurely because Don wrote his Dawn name, wrote his on, name it. on it. Dawn. Dawn. So. And then there's another like, yeah, uh, crack that's just causing the leaves to turn yellow. Plus fall, but yeah. Good job. Yeah. Little bumps on the leaves, and yeah, so it has a disease. Yeah, and we also <laughs> <laughs> we also so. noticed that there were some leaves that had like bites taken out of them from bugs, but none of the leaves that had bumps on them had. Bites taken out from bugs. So they don't want really? it. They probably taste yeah. nasty. Were you using your observation glasses? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's that's really really cool. Cool. So. Ours was like the leaves twisted or malformed, and we thought that like having a malfunction was like a. That's cool. Okay. <laughs> between a bush and a tree, but we classified it as a tree for the sake of this. So. Um, our tree syndrome was that we need to find if it had spots on it or if it was bumpy and we found it had tons of brown spots on this bush and all the leaves were like kind of falling off, it was kind of dying and there were tons of broken branches too. This poor thing is about to die, so <laughs> that's what we found. <laughs> okay. Anna has a uh, sudden leaf drop, so the middle was dead, had some Rotting. 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 <laughs> Rotting spots in it. <laughs> and and the trunk is good. Yeah. Aww. And it's unhappy. And it's sad. It's gonna last. It's yeah. done. Aww. Okay, next year. The tree also has the same thing and we noticed very too late. <laughs> right, we found it right over there. Um so we found it, there was like a rotted hole in it, and so there's a branch hanging off. Mm -hmm. And then we found a bunch of branches broken off and on the ground. And the leaves were all different colors. Some of them are dying. Some of them have like little bug bites in them. And then we found an ant on the tree too. So and the bug bites in the leaves. We think ours will live, but we just don't know how much longer. Of course, the leaves that we found on the ground from the tree, which had a dead branch in it. And we realized there was a rock spot on the bottom and a little bit of uh, vandalization <laughs> on our tree. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, yeah. That's why we got that boost. Okay. You're gonna live or die. Is there just oh, okay. <laughs> Do you want me to stand behind you? Look at that big pine tree right there. And our we our was like our leaves turned like brown. And we said that happened because it was really hot this summer and we didn't get a ton of rain. So the leaves were like brown. Yeah, and although some may perceive this as a palm tree, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know. It was it's definitely gonna live. a palm tree. It's gonna live. It's gonna be okay. Oh, sorry. It'll be okay. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> it won't thrive. It won't thrive, but it'll be fine. There's still tons of different trees in the environment that affects the way the trees are. Some are getting lots of nutrients, some are getting poor nutrients. Some are alive, some are dying, and we need to know that our impact, you know, as humans, we impact the trees around us as well. So. And then going off of that, this is like an introduction lesson. I'm talking about it, and maybe together you guys save a tree. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah.